I have made a lot of these chairs. It's a real fun project. One of the things that's key to making the chairs look good is that both legs need to be exactly identical. They have to be the same shape. The easiest way to make that happen is to use a pattern like this one. So this pattern is the exact shape of the back leg. In addition to giving the shape of the leg, it also provides all the mortise locations of the leg. So when I make the legs, what I do is start by cutting my leg blank larger than the finish size. So I took my wood, set the template on here, and traced it. And then on the bandsaw, I cut about a sixteenth of an inch outside the line. Now what we need to do is get the material trimmed so it's a perfect match to the template. And that's going to call for a bit like this. This is called a flush trim router bit. The bearing and the cutter are exactly the same diameter. So whatever the bearing rides on, it's going to make the shape below exactly the same. So we need a couple things out of this cutter. Flush trim bits are available in a lot of different sizes. Looking at this one, it's a big beefy bit. That's very important because the leg is so thick, the bit is sticking a long way up out of the router table. So if we had a small bit that couldn't take that, it would chatter, and that chatter would telegraph into our work. We'd have all sorts of sanding to do later. The cut quality from this bit is going to be so nice, there'll be very little, if any, sanding required when we're done. What we need to do next is get our template fastened down to the blank. And I'll do that with double face tape. The double face tape can get stuck to the pattern and to the material. Doesn't take a lot of it. In fact, if you use too much of it, you'll just have a hard time separating the two later. With the second paper layer taken off of the tape, now I can put my pattern on. We want to make sure that the pattern is positioned right the first time it goes on, because that tape grabs so well, you kind of only get one shot at this. With the pattern adhered to the blank, now you can see that the leg blank itself is larger than the pattern, and that's what the flush trim bit will fix for us. I've got the height of the bit set so that the bearing will ride on the pattern and the top of the cutter is just a little bit above the top of the material. At this point I can turn on the router, ease into that bit, get on the ball bearing, and trim away all the excess. Once the flush trim is done, we can take the pattern off, remove the tape residue, and now you can see just how smooth that is. Even more importantly, every leg we make from this pattern will be perfectly identical, whether you're making one leg or a thousand. This flush trim setup is a great way to make your furniture parts.